This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe. Uh, hope everyone had a nice long weekend. I uh, wanted to just do a very quick video on um, a couple of book recommendations that I think are a little bit different. I mean, most times uh, when stock market people are putting out uh, book recommendations, it is, it is about uh, stock analysis, market analysis, um, all these different things that you could be looking at, another indicator or whatever. Um, I think it's worthwhile just recognizing the importance of understanding yourself if you're, if you're looking to make money in the market, especially from the trading standpoint. Um, so the books that I'm recommending today are a little bit more like uh, focused on you internally. And so uh, let's go ahead and just get into this real quick. Um, the first book is called Nothing. Um, and uh, James Sloman, who has passed away, uh, wrote this. In a, and I think what's really uh, intrigued me about this, and I think its application for the market, is uh, is that it's it's about the mind and kind of recognizing the mind and slowing the mind down and having a, a better understanding of how the mind works. And um, I talk a lot about the river flowing. If you noticed in the last two or three videos that I've, I've mentioned, it's not fighting the market direction and go with the flow of the river. And I think this book does a really good job of, um, of going into that in depth and giving you an understanding of how not to fight the market um, and how to understand where, why your mind is wandering and maybe how to calm it down a little bit. Um, so that, from that standpoint, I think it's uh, very helpful. Now, the other book is, uh, called Awareness by Anthony DeMello and, uh, Anthony DeMello, uh, was, uh, he's also passed away, but he had, he wrote this, um, as a part of a series of different books, but he was a Jesuit priest from India who I thought did a very interesting job in finding the commonality between the Eastern and Western kind of spiritual side of things. Um, now, this book has some spiritual undertones to it, but there's a lot of applications about the same concept of understanding, having more awareness of yourself and awareness of what you're thinking and what you're doing and kind of giving you some, um, I wouldn't call it methods, but both books have different things that will have you um, thinking about these things during the course of a day. Um, it, at least they've helped me from that standpoint, and they have both helped with my trading. Um, a lot of times what you try and do is force your opinion on the market, right? You want, you want the market to do what you want it to do as opposed to just accepting what the market is doing and following along. Let me just give you an example. This is actually an excerpt from Awareness. And um, when I read this, it, it just hit me that this could be very, very useful when you think about it in terms of the market. So if you think about this, it says, when I'm listening to you. And after I read this paragraph, I was thinking, you know, if you, if you change the you to the market, it really would be a helpful tool to people to think in these terms. And there are little things like this throughout the book that I think, uh, again, if you apply it that way, now you can apply it to the rest of your life as well, but I, I just think in terms of the market, it does have a specific application because what I've been talking about in terms of um, uh, uh, being aware of yourself and having an understanding of what you're doing or what you're thinking can actually be more important than what the market's doing. Because again, you don't want to fight the market. So if you if you understand what this is saying, when I'm listening to you, when I'm listening to the market, it's actually more important for me to listen to me than it is to listen to the market. I mean, of course, it's important to know what the market is telling you. But it's actually more important to listen to myself because if I don't, then I'm really not going to be hearing what the market is saying. I'm going to be, it's, the market is going to be um, saying one thing, but I'm going to be coming at it from my own beliefs, my own conditioning. I'm going to be rea being reacting to things in ways that um, it really has to do more with my insecurities. A friend of mine might have called me. Um, you know, at, at noon and said, hey, I'm making a fortune today on a stock that I'm trading and you hadn't made any money that day, 
right? And then all of a sudden that afternoon, you start forcing trades because you feel like, okay, everyone else is making money but me. So this is kind of what you want to be thinking about. Um, I, I think what you can get out of this type of book which is just getting a better understanding. I mean, some people call it um, mindfulness and that type of thing. I like the word awareness because you want to have an awareness of, of your own thought, almost like you're watching yourself. And so um, let's just look at this from a market standpoint for a second. So the question I have is, you know, the market has been dropping down. We've been talking about the last, you know, two, three weeks, how this was sort of overdone to the downside. And, you know, the real question is, did you have a bias that really didn't agree with the, what the indicators were saying? Meaning, did were you convinced that the market was going way down here and going to go all the way back down? Were you Did you have this underlying bearish tendency in your head? And... Or were you just going with the flow of the market, starting to notice the momentum starting to slow, starting to see how important this trend line was on the daily chart, starting to see that we made an undercut of this prior low and had no follow through whatsoever and started to turn around, especially um, on the daily chart. So if those things are hitting you the correct way and you're not fighting them, then that's a great thing. But I think what these two books can help you with is maybe avoid that tendency. Because I know, like, I think there could be times where someone that you know uh, might be telling you or have been telling you for a while about how much money they've made in the stock market and uh, over the last year or something like that. And you might not even realize it, but it, you're not aware of it is a better way to put it. it. But you're actually hoping the market goes down because you want to shut this guy up, right? I mean, so these are the types of things that I think you need to be um, aware of, okay? This is this is you internally. And my, my suggestion is, is every day at the end of the day, go through a period of review, and um, especially with any trades that you've done, and see if there was any biases in place that are affecting the way that you're seeing the market or a specific... Uh, trade, especially if you look at it afterwards and you wonder, why did I take that trade? That really wasn't a good trade. There was a reason. You were probably afraid of missing something or there, there was something going on in your mind. So anyway, those two books I think will help from that standpoint. These books are different. Look, they're not stock market books and I'll be the first one to admit it. And I, I want to make sure you recognize that because I don't want you to come back to me and say, hey, this, this has nothing to do with the stock market. But I think you can take these and apply them to everyday life but I think you can also apply them to the stock market. And I think it, what it'll do is help you to understand how to surrender to the market a little bit more and not try and fight it. So uh, anyway, hope this was helpful. Go ahead and uh, post any questions or comments and uh, see you next time. Thanks.